Another restoration project today, and this time I'm paying some long overdue attention to this, uh, the Faithful Quinny from 1993. Now, the eagle-eyed connoisseurs among you will recognise this bike from several of my former videos. This was my first proper serious high-end bike, which I um, was very privileged enough to have saved up for by 1993. The frame is made of Reynolds 653 steel. The group set is almost entirely Shimano Dior XT, with the exception of these fabulous gold XC Pro brakes that um, you will have seen I put on quite recently. Now, there's no doubt this is a beautiful bike and uh, it doesn't require much in the way of restoration, certainly. Uh, however, if you take a closer look at it with the eye of a connoisseur, you will see that there are certain areas of neglect which I think don't really dignify a bike this beautiful. And I think after 27 years, it's time to finally put things right. Now, the obvious one, of course, is this chromoly seat post. Nothing wrong with it. I think it was an imitation Dior XT one of the period, but the black uh, coating has worn off and I've sort of polished it to a marble effect. It doesn't look bad, but it's quite cheap and heavy. Um, likewise, this looks saddle, a beautiful collector's piece, but quite ragged. The gold has gone sort of faded, the badges have scratched and there's actually holes in the leather. Um, this stem has got a very run out of money look about it. I'm pretty sure it was the cheapest aluminium stem I could find in the shop. And also it's a few years out, a few years newer than the rest of the bike. So it's an anachronism. Um, also, if you look closely, the beautiful Mavic M231 CD, that's a hard anodized rim um, at the back got killed and I replaced it um, with a 317. Again, nothing wrong with that, but it just doesn't match. Um, also, while we're down in this area, um, covering up scratches in the beautiful red paint with insulating tape might have been fine for a student back in the 90s, but uh, it's not for a gentleman collector, so that needs sorting out. Um, moving on with the list, um, oh, well, also while we're down here, these skewers, I'm pretty sure they're LX ones. They're certainly sort of mismatched random Shimano ones. Um, certainly they don't befit the dignity of these beautiful original XT hubs. Um, now, I don't have any XT skewers from the period, but I do have some lovely titanium ones that should go on. Um, I'm sure as we move around the bike, we'll find lots of other just little things that need doing that will really bring it up to the, uh, the standard of preservation that it deserves. Also, things like these DX shifters. Um, I'm keeping them because they're entirely authentic. I had them um, on day one when I built this thing because at the time I was too poor for XT. Um, what sets them apart from XT is these horrible stamped steel clamps, as opposed to the alloy ones on the XTs on some of my other bikes. Um, these have gone rusty, so that needs some looking at as well. And just a couple of uh, more scruffy areas down here. Um, I absolutely love this mix and match XT and XTR chain set um, from the period. Um, as was always the case with young riders back in the 90s, we would go everywhere in the middle ring until it got ripped to pieces. And at the time, I think this was the only XTR I could possibly afford. It was certainly the first piece of XTR that I had and, and probably the last for many years. And I was very proud that I had some XTR on my bike. I don't think there's that much difference between this and XT except a slight color difference. But as you can see, the, uh, the finish on the crank needs to be evened out. Uh, this was originally a sort of brushed aluminium finish. If I was to polish it ad infinitum and the whole thing ended up with a mirror finish, it wouldn't be a bad thing, but I'm going to try and just even it out so it's kind of halfway. Um, and these scuffed SPDs, these were first generation SPDs and I still have the scars on my wrists and knees from um, learning to ride with these and uh, obviously not getting it right. Um, these have got battle scars all over, but they are functionally absolutely perfect. In fact, I might not mess with those. I could repaint them, but that might be a step too far. And finally, for the real heads, this is a first generation Shimano Dior XT shark fin. How do I know? Because from the late 80s onwards, they had a little hole here for a zip tie. This is the very first model, which didn't have the hole. So you had to kind of use sticky tape and uh, insulating tape to hold it in place. I'm not going to drill a hole in it because um, then it would be indistinguishable from the later ones. I am going to preserve it as best I can and stick it back on.
uh, it's going to require quite a lot of treatment just to get the sticky stuff off and then as you can see there's very little paint left on some bits thankfully i think i've got the kit to fix it well following a clean up it's very clear that this is not just going to polish out but i thought of that i've got a color match from halfords um, for touch up paint and then when it's all dried i'm going to use this color match tea cut to sort of blend it all in and i'm also going to tea cut all over it just to sort of have a go at the top layer of scratches. And then of course I'm gonna use the trusty Spray Dot Bike top wax to finish. All right, it's painting time. Um, now we've learned, of course, from my um, earlier video with the Pace Fork, that before you start getting things like primer and wire brushes and sandpaper out on something as priceless as this beautiful bike, um, you really should test a little bit on an inconspicuous area first. So I'm gonna learn my lesson and uh, test this paint on something less valuable. Um, we've established this McLaren is no use to me. It's got no load space. The kids don't like it much, so maybe we'll have a crack at this. And then if it works um, on the car, then we'll get it back on the Quinny. Even close up and in daylight, I think this touch-up paint is doing a fantastic job. But what's even more exciting is when I've blended it in with tea cut and polish afterwards, uh, it's going to be far, far better than the damage that it's covering. Right, I'm going to leave that to dry uh, and I'm also going to take a leaf out of uh, the book of DB's Retro MTB Workshop, um, which is to stay at a metre's distance because from that distance it looks absolutely flawless. Of course, if you look close up, it looks like it was done by a circus monkey, but it's a lot better than it was. Um, while it's drying, it's time to start thinking about this saddle. Uh, in daylight, you can see the look saddle is past its best. It's still worthy of a place in an art gallery. Uh, in fact, I would say it's probably too pretty to be on a mountain bike. So with that in mind, we need to think about what to do. Now, with regard to this scratched up, heavy, basic, cheap chromoly seat post that I put on when I run out of money back in the 90s, um, there's a very easy fix for that. And that is to go on eBay and look for one of the two big names that I would have put on had I been able to afford it. And in the 90s, that would have been either Syncross or USA. So this is the real deal. This is from the year 1993. It's not quite as scratched up as the one it's replacing, but it does have that authentic patina on it. So I'm excited about putting that on. And also, of course, just as a finishing touch, a titanium seat bolt to replace the rusty steel. And of course, not even Donald Trump himself would be so crass as to pair a black seat post with a bare metal stem. Well, perhaps he would, but I certainly wouldn't. So the next job was to think, what was the stem of my dreams in 1993? And I'm delighted to say, booyah. This is a genuine handmade Ross Schaefer chromo stem. It might actually be heavier than the aluminium one it's replacing, but by God, it's beautiful. Right, I've dragged it inside to hang up and dry. Um, and then overnight, I'm going to have a think about saddles. If you're anything like me, you probably like cars almost as much as you like bikes. It's all technology, of course. Um, in which case, you'll probably be aware that there's a new Mercedes Maybach S600 coming out this year. Um, and the media are getting all excited about this um, porcelain Napa interior, the softest, nicest leather. But what they seem to have forgotten is that this was available as an option on um, the S-Class, the CLS, the SL, any top-end Mercedes for some years. Uh, I've had this one for three years and, uh, well, why am I telling you this? I'm not just bragging about my exquisite taste in car interiors. This is related to that flight saddle that we did in last week's video. The problem we've got with this flight, as you'll remember at the end of the last video, is um, these indentations all around the edges where the clamps were, where I was holding it down to stick it down with the glue. Now, I had hoped that um, after a few days in a warm room, they would just sort of heal themselves um, and they haven't. And the reason why I talk about the car is if you look at this passenger seat, 
Um, I've not cleaned this interior, by the way, in the three years I've owned the car. Um, I've occasionally wiped a bit of chicken grease off with baby wipes, but otherwise, um, these just sort of have this magical property of healing themselves. I could put my heaviest daughter in a child seat in this seat, and then when the child seat's gone, all the dents, just like in the back of the flight, um, are, you know, you think, oh my God, how's that ever going to heal? And it just kind of does. I don't do anything to it. I don't have to heat it or clean it or wipe it or anything. So what I want to know is, why does it sort of sort itself out in cars but on this bike saddle uh, it looks like it's permanent damage um i would welcome any uh, suggestions from experts I, i've had one um expert suggesting a hot towel although i'm worried that might sort of leach out some moisture or take away the shine um i don't really want to take a heat gun to it um, I suppose I could just be patient and see if it does eventually pop out in time but yeah it remains a mystery obviously um white napper car interiors are significantly more expensive and probably higher grade than whatever was on this saddle um but even still i mean you know that the fairly basic leather in my land rover takes an absolute beating and still looks good after several years um and this after one night of being clamped looks like it's wrecked so yeah not entirely sure what to do about this i must confess if you saw my purple for the people video recently in which i festooned my titanium dynatech with jewelry you'll know already how uh, sentimental i am about these really cool original fred salmon racing titanium skewers so of course purple is not going to match this bike so i went and got some more in silver uh, these are brand new obviously they they date back to i'd say 1993 which is the year this bike was built um, but they've never been taken out of the packaging so what a win There are some great instructional videos on YouTube for how to wet and dry sand these cranks back to a sort of mirror finish. Um, and certainly it's something I do intend to do. That's a project um, for another day because it's a project unto itself. You can see it's been done to this XT crank on the uh, explosive sitting here. And of course, as you'll know if you watch this channel, this XTR crank set is probably front of the queue. For now, I'm quite happy with this. Um, yes, it's still very sort of marbled in terms of the areas of wear, but I don't mind a bit of patina as long as it's uh, preserved. The restoration is for another day. There's a reason why I want to put a flight on this build, um, even if it is the scruffiest one in my collection, uh, although I don't know which one I'm going to have finally, and that's that it shows off this fabulous clamp assembly on the USC seat post. I mean, the combo of the saddle and post just looks legit. I have one challenge, however, um, well, another challenge to add to the list, and I would love any input from experts, and that is how do you restore the depth of colour to an anodised surface? You can see this lovely uh, machined aluminium clamp is red anodised. You can also see that it's faded over the 30 years or so of its life, um, and I know that the, if you were to polish it, for example, or use that T-cut colour blend, all you'd do is take off that very thin upper layer and strip it down to bare aluminium. So... Any advice would be welcomed. I'd say we're not far off now, an appropriate state for a bike of this provenance. Now to the untrained eye, it doesn't look like I've done a great deal, but of course, if you watch this channel, you will have the trained eye of a UCI scrutineer, and you will have seen that I've done actually quite a lot to it. Um, first of all, the titanium skewers shave off a bit of weight, as does the USE seat post and the flight. Um, this lovely handmade salsa stem not only looks much more appropriate but also lifts the front end just a couple of degrees um, as of course I am significantly older than I was when this bike was custom made for me as a teenager. Um, and finally the um, touch-up paint and polish has done an absolutely fantastic job as I said before unless you really get close up with a magnifying glass this looks factory fresh I'm absolutely delighted with the finish um, and little touches like sticking the shark fin back on correctly without using insulating tape, um, I think are just uh, lovely. Of course, the crank restoration is a job for another day and the sourcing of an M231 CD, uh, please shout out if you know where I can find such a thing, to rebuild the rear wheel. And then I think this bike is going to be absolutely perfect. 
So there we are. Thanks as always for watching. Um, and as always, please like, subscribe, comment, and crucially smash that bell. Um, and also I'm welcoming advice on what you'd like to see next. I'm kind of in between projects now. Um, I'm taking votes on what my next project might look like. Uh, obviously I'd like to do a money no object build, but that's not quite realistic right now. So perhaps I'm going all Euro, that's a bit of a challenge. I'd like to do something with no Suntour, no Shimano, no American or Japanese frame materials, all Euro. So think Mavic, Campag, uh, maybe a Sun frame, who knows? I would welcome suggestions. And if anybody knows where I might find parts like that, please give me a shout. Look forward to seeing you next time.